I'm going to talk through the uh, bow arm warm-ups that we've been practicing, starting with our finger taps. So when we're doing our finger taps, you want to show me that? We're trying to develop fine motor skill awareness and eye-hand coordination between the thumb and individual fingers. So um, the language that I usually use is in part maybe the pointer or index finger, depending on what they're used to calling it, but we're also trying to teach them what finger numbers they are on the violin. So at this point we're saying one, 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 two, 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 three, 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 four, four, four. Um, when we practice this, I go ahead and do it for um, both hands, even though we're talking about bow warm-ups here. Obviously, this is also good for developing um, in the left hand. Um, when we make our um, bunny ears to prepare the bow, what we're looking for there is that the middle two fingers act as a unit, and they are connected together by tendons in inside the hand as well. Um, so we want to, those fingers to feel as a relaxed unit, and the thumb is across from those two fingers and creates our sense of balance. So our center of balance in the hand is here with our thumb across from our long or, or longest fingers. So we really want to sense that balance. So um, we're preparing also for the thumb to be round, which is when we can do the peekaboo. Good, and make sure that we don't have any closed angles. We want all angles to be open. Um, the bunny ears, just the outer fingers or the ears, and we can just practice finding them and then relaxing them again. Then we'll work on different angles opening. So we're going to nod the bunny's head up and down so that we're doing this up and down angle. And we want to prepare the idea of doing circles. Eventually that'll play into spiccato, saccia, retakes, colle. And let's try the other way, circle the other way also. So very good. That's right. So we're working on those circles. Now, if you ever want to try to see what it feels like when it's not balanced, put your first finger across from your thumb like that, and now try to go up and down, and you just feel it doesn't feel balanced. It feels crooked. And you can try also with your thumb across from your pinky, and if your bow hold is centered that way, it's also not balanced. So you can see right away, especially in making circles, that the balance is best, is best right here. Um, then our other exercise where we moved, uh, put our hands out in front of us, I had them touch their nose. You want to try that? And then go out again this way. And the reason for that is that normally if they touch the nose, we want to develop a sense of center and midline and come out from the nose. Their arms will be um, centered with their body as opposed to twisted to the side. So when we play the violin eventually, we want our arms to be hanging equidistant on each side. We don't want to be twisting to the left or to the right. So this helps them develop this awareness and creates the triangle here in front of them. Good. And now what we're gonna do is use the left arm as a guide, and when we hop from our shoulder to our hand, we're mimicking the opening and closing of the gate of the violin, bow of the bow arm. Right, and by using the arm here, it helps them not to come away from themselves and open the upper arm to the back. So it really helps them open and close that gate. Now the angle of that is a little bit more forward than when we play the violin, but it's a, I still, still find it a very useful exercise for opening and closing the gate. And then when you slide, let's try with the sliding, you get that fluid feeling of opening and closing and the hand is responding and they're shadowing, shadowing that motion. Then we did one more exercise with a pencil or marker. And usually we'll just start with the hand open and use your thumb pretty much any way you want to roll. We're just trying to get a sense that there's flexibility inside the thumb and fingers and that they can move and move. And I don't say too much about it at this point. Um, you could ask them to keep their thumb a little bit round, but I find if you say too much, sometimes it makes them tighten up and try to do something specific. 
just let them play with it and roll around for a week. And then in the next, time, next uh, lessons when we start the bow, they have some familiarity, but that feel was something that's small and not as heavy as the bow. Thank you.